KBC is creating the biggest bank and banking group in Bulgaria with the acquisition of Raiffeisen Bank Bulgaria in a deal worth over 1 billion euro. Today, a new brand was revealed that is going to be used in the transitional period before full closure of the merger. Mr. Ruben, KBC is creating the biggest bank in the biggest banking group in Bulgaria by requiring Raiffeisen Bank Bulgaria for over 1 billion euro. What are the strong features, the strong um, points of the Bulgarian banking system encouraging this huge investment? Yes, well, KBC has been active now 15 years already in Bulgaria. So let's say we had a lot of time to observe the local economy um, and also the, uh, um, the financial industry. And um, out of that experience, uh, which was a completely positive experience, I have to say, we, we made a few conclusions. First, we are a long-term believer in, in Bulgaria as a country, as an economy. We think there are great opportunities and that the convergence of the Bulgarian economy to uh, the rest of the European economy offers great opportunities for growth. Two, we see in our customer base how customers are actually developing also our business customers. And so we believe that partnering with them, we can benefit from that growth for our own business. Uh, and three, um, which was a key factor for the shareholder uh, to, uh, to decide to make this additional very big investment, is um, we have seen that we have excellent staff here, outstanding people of the highest qualifications, um, who can compete with any business in any country that we have. And so it was, uh, although the investment was very big, actually a very easy decision for our shareholders. When this uh, opportunity, Vzmosnost uh, is now my, my preferred word in Bulgarian, when this opportunity came along, uh, we did not hesitate. This was the thing to do. Are there some weak points you need to address? Well, weak points um, is, is, is maybe not the right expression. I think in, in, a, in, a, in a commercial business, in a com very competitive business like banking, the financial industry, um, you always have points you want to improve. You always have to get better. Um, uh, for example, and one of the big reasons why we are looking for this acquisition and trying to create bigger scale, we feel that we have to move faster in terms of, uh, you know, digital innovation. Our customers um, are digitally active all the time. They expect banks, insurers, um, to create that new modern experience um, uh, in a much faster way. We know what we want to do, we know how to do it, we have done it in many of our other markets, but what we were missing a bit uh, here was the scale to actually do that much faster. So now we can address um, that challenge. And I think, um, you know, uh, you're never perfect. Uh, you have to, you're only perfect when the customer is ultimately satisfied. I think we're doing a very competitive job, our results show it. It is the customer who decides, decides ultimately on our results. But um, I think that race is a race that never stops. You are only as good as the last customer you made happy. Uh, and we have to keep fighting for that. Your portfolio in Bulgaria is quite broad. It includes retail banking, leasing, insurance and other activities. In which one direction would we like to prioritize? For us, all these components are equally important. So it is, it is the unique KBC uh, international model that what we try to achieve in the countries we call our, our, our core countries, our home countries, and Bulgaria is now the third biggest, is going to become the third biggest and most important home market for KBC. In, in all those markets, we want the complete bank insurance model. So we want to be a one-stop shop uh, in terms of financial services for our customers. So. All these businesses, um, the bank, the insurer, the asset management company, the investment company, the pension company, the, le the leasing company, they are all equally important. So if you ask me what I want to achieve, uh, we want to be number one in all of our businesses. After the merger, are you planning optimization of your branch network, of your administrative network in Bulgaria? Let me say the, the, the branch network, the physical network, is absolutely essential to our business model. So we invest a lot in our digital uh, service offer, but we also firmly believe that the access to a person, a person-to-person -person interaction, always has to be available for customers. I mean, in the end, 
banking is about trust and trust happens between people. It doesn't happen between persons and machines. So having that local presence is essential. Of course, how the network, the, the branch network uh, is, is set up is constantly changing. It's the customer needs actually that decide that. Um, and we constantly have to look uh, where we locate these branches, how we operate them. The merger in itself will not change that. Uh, what we will have to do over the next two years is gradually bring the brand in, in locations where we have a, a KBC Bank Bulgaria branch, as it is now called, and the UBB branch together, we will have to merge physically, bring these, these branches together, but there will still be a branch, but it will be a bigger branch, probably in a, in a, in a bigger location, yeah. And this is, of course, this logistic work of transition takes some time. But let's say the merger by itself, or the acquisition and then the merger by itself, is no reason to reduce the number of branches. On the other hand, optimizing the network is something that has been going on for many years and that will never stop. But we will always have a physical network because we think it is essential for, uh, for our customers and for our service model. As a leader on the Bulgarian banking market, you have quite strong influence. Which trends would you like to encourage to influence stronger? I think we, we, indeed, uh, we indeed have a great responsibility, uh, being one of the leading, the biggest financial institution in the country. That means we are basically touching all the aspects of the economy. And we are very aware of that responsibility. Um, and there are many things that, I mean, by doing our business right and, and correct and in the most modern way and bringing new technologies to people and for, for making their access uh, to financial solutions easier, that's of course our core job, that's the key trend. But I would say if I have to pick one second key trend that for me personally and for our group is essential, it is um, helping the transition also in Bulgaria of the economy and society to become more sustainable. Uh, climate change is here, it is real, it is impacting our way of life, the way we do business. And so we have a role to play ourselves as a company to reduce our climate impact, but even more importantly to help our customers make that transition. So I think if you want one trend, that's the one I would put at number one. Comparing to November last year, when the acquisition was first announced, we are living in a very different world now. We have, we have changing geopolitical situation, different economic situation and also shifting monetary policy. How do you foresee the development in the future months for you as a banking group, but also for our customers from the business and the households? I think um, um, over the last 10, 15 years, we've become used to extreme changes and, and to, to deal with totally unforeseen and unplanned events. Yeah. So the world is volatile, is changing all the time, is unpredictable. Um, which is why, again, it matters for us to be such a very, you know, big and stable financial group. We have the economic and the capital buffer to, to go through these fluctuations uh, without being disrupted or becoming endangered by it. So uh, this is important to know. The second thing is you must always be attentive. We have to be flexible. So it's very clear that the, the, the key, one of the key economic worries that we have that is affecting all of our lives, uh, uh, not just the lives of companies, but the life of, of, of every person, is the very extreme inflation that we are living. Uh, unfortunately, our expectations are that we will end up with an average inflation this year again of 12.5%. This is, this is very big. It has a massive impact. Um, um, I think uh, there is a risk that the inflation becomes more permanent and more embedded. Uh, it used to be driven only by energy, now it is becoming a food price driven inflation, more and more a wage driven inflation. So um, it's a very difficult situation economically that we find ourselves in, not only in Bulgaria, but in international context. And that of course poses challenges for individuals, for all our business customers, for us as a bank. Um, but again, we, um, I think we have become used to managing uh, unexpected situations. Look at the COVID situation a few years ago. Uh, we, as a management board with our management team, are constantly assessing this uh, every week and making the necessary adjustments. So these changes do not frighten me. It just means, like every business, that we will have to adapt and adapt we will. We are entering a cycle of tighter monetary policy when it will reach Bulgaria and how 
will influence your deposit or credit policy? Yeah, well, it will. It, uh, the ECB has now very clearly announced that they expect to do the first uh, rate hike uh, of 25 basis points probably this month. Uh, and we know that there are still a few uh, decision moments between now and the year end and very likely uh, additional increases of the interest rates will come in the coming months and, and towards the end of this year. Um, our analysis is that at this moment, in this first phase, certainly not with the first 25 basis points, this is not going to have any material effect here in Bulgaria on, on the, on the uh, on the economy and certainly also not on the way we do business. So I do not see this affecting neither on the deposit side but also not on the credit side in any material way uh, the, uh, the financial services or the cost of credit if you like or the cost of deposits. Um, the future will tell indeed how this evolves further um, but um, it's not a short term, uh, short term uh, it will not have a short term impact it's actually on our market. Combined with the very hot market in the recent years, partly because of the very cheap loans, could this trend provoke a rising uh, risk? Well, I'm not worried from a risk perspective. It's true that the, uh, the property prices have risen very strongly in the last couple of years. Of course, also because partially there was, there was cheap money. But if you look in historic context, uh, the prices are um, we say more or less at the level they were, um, you know, or still below the level they peaked at uh, when the previous crisis happened uh, 10 years ago. Um, what is more important, however, and the data of the uh, Bulgarian National Bank show that, and so do our own data for, for our own bank, is that I think the financial industry learned the lesson the last time around. So, yes, we have been providing credit, but we have carefully been watching the criteria under which we have uh, actually given granted loans to, to private individuals. So what always matters is that you make a good assessment, what is the repayment capacity of an individual customer, and that you do not only look at the value and the increasing value of, of the real estate itself. So we look at many factors when we grant a loan, but the most in factor always is what is the debt that the individual can carry. And uh, if you look at those standards, uh, and they are published by the Bulgarian National Bank, then actually the industry has remained very, very conservative. So I think at this point in time we have, we, we have not reached a dangerous territory. In that sense it might be actually a good moment that the rate starts rising and that you know a little bit of the steam is taken out of the real estate market, the real estate prices. Because of course if this goes on for many, many years you could easily come into a high-risk environment, but uh, I think we have avoided that, uh, so I'm not worried about, about a credit crunch or an uh, explosion of the mortgage market. Bulgaria has set timetable for entering the Eurozone. Do you feel the banking sector is ready, well prepared for uh, shifting to the Euro? The banking sector is preparing very hard to be ready. I have to say that the the timeline is extremely ambitious and challenging uh, and uh, in other markets where with KVC Group we have done this, uh, the preparations uh, and the discussions between the different stakeholders, uh, and there are many, uh, the government obviously, National Bank and many other stakeholders, started much earlier. But fine, it is, the, it is a political decision um, um, whether or not to do the Euro. There is a decision of the government, so we take note of that. and. As a, uh, as a group, but also as an industry. I know also uh, my colleagues in the other banks are very hard working on that. And yes, um, if we have to be ready, we will be ready. Um, but a lot of things have to be done and also a lot of legal work has to be done. A lot of laws have to be voted. I believe more than 100 uh, laws and, and regulations have to be issued to give the framework not just for the banks, but for the whole society, actually, to, to make the transition. So um, we can make it uh, as a country, but if we want to make it, we have to go in, uh, in, in top gear uh, immediately, I would say. What are the positives and the negatives from entering the Eurozone? Would that affect the flexibility of the monetary policy? That's, that is very important at the moment. Oh, you know, I, I, I have no, personally no strong opinions about this. Um, you, you can argue the pros and cons of Euro, um, you know, indefinitely. And I think you, 
it, uh, and this, arg this argumentation is, is taking place in the public space uh, in the country, as it should. I think it's good that in every country there is an open and clear debate. Um, and, you know, I think this is ultimately this is a political choice. Um, there is, uh, I don't think this is science. And you can have economic and political arguments for, you can have other people have a different vision. Um, uh, I think that is the privilege of, uh, of uh, the government, of the parliament. Uh, it's their job. Our job as a, um, as a bank uh, and as a, as a leading, uh, the leading financial player is to make sure that we are ready to support whatever choice is made. And from a business perspective, we will adjust. Uh, we will, if we go to Euro, the industry will lose some incomes, uh, some foreign exchange income, for example, but we will also benefit from other trends and uh, KBC Group has done it in many markets, so we are not worried about this. As a global trend, the fintech industry is getting stronger and stronger. How is the uh, traditional banking managing with this trend? Well, uh, I think the current crisis provides a very interesting challenge for a lot of the fintechs uh, because uh, um, you see that their life became a little bit less easy when the cheap money has disappeared. But, um, you know, I think I, I welcome fintechs as, 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 as good competition because what the fintechs do is they become, they pick one piece of the financial services, focus on that and bring the total advantages or try to bring the total advantage of technology and data uh, to that part of the business. That creates a nice challenge for the true leaders of financial business, which is still the classical groups like ourselves, uh, to actually, uh, you know, also play this game, move ahead. Um, and it's one of our core focuses strategically. It has been for the last 10 years in KDC Group. And uh, you probably noticed that uh, uh, last year, internationally, uh, the uh, mobile banking app of KBC in Belgium was voted the best financial uh, app in the world. So we beat all the fintechs, fintechs there. It took 10 years of work, but we are there. So I think the industry, and certainly our group, KBC Group, is, is, is rising to this challenge. Um, and um, I think it's good that that pressure is there. I'm not worried uh, that uh, this will uh, ultimately undermine our position. You know, competition is there, uh, is good. I think it, it creates options for customers. And it's just up to us to make sure that we, uh, we can win that race. But uh, we are very well positioned.